Life is complete now. <laughs> Waking up with Lancelot in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy, you most adorable of all dogs in the world. So sweet. I know. Now I know I'm truly home. Look at this. What just happened? Oh, look at you, the picture of innocence. That bread is being dunked into this hot chocolate. Don't think I haven't noticed. It's very nice. That's the first thing you'll eat today. Go on, show the world what no. you're doing. Show the world. Because it looks so delicious, everyone's just going to be jealous. Go on. Go on. Oh, yeah. This will be a lovely dinner today with asparagus from the market. You did not! Yes. My favourite. And some radish, potatoes. And this is all from the market? Uh, yeah, except for the potatoes. And I'm going to do our hollandaise. <gasps> that and looks so good. That's going to be my first asparagus of the season. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Well, so. We must make a wish. Finally use my earthenware asparagus dish. Thank God. <laughs> oh, know. thank you know. God. Thank it's you, awesome. Marie, actually. <laughs> I've got asparagus like clamps, the way you're supposed to fit them on the plate. Oh, we get to use your asparagus clamps as well? And that's what came... That right. sounds dodgy. Well, they're, they're, they're silver plated, darling. I see your silver plated asparagus clamps. I bought them up, I think, three years ago, and it came with uh, the asparagus earthenware Seven I minutes. chose my fiancé wisely. <laughs> How many women can say, oh, we'll just use my fiancé's silver-plated asparagus clamps for this situation? So oh, pleased. Nice. <laughs> Very pleased. I'm looking at the new napkins that we got in Ardmore. Philip said that these were the right ones for the table. You were right. Well, I said that it's the right ones, it's the right pattern. Yeah, wrong background. But wrong background. Look, it brings out this exactly. colour beautifully. They didn't have them in this. But I'm thinking that when we use them for the guest dinners, we could alternate the animals oh, I would love that. all the way around. So, for example, this person could have a giraffe. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll have to sort of fold it slightly yes. eccentrically to get that giraffe I'll visible. You'll have make to sort it work. that somehow. <laughs> and then the person next to them can have an elephant. Again, I feel like your family <laughs> might be a little more symmetrical. And there's also another elephant and a leopard. So we can alternate elephant, giraffe, elephant. Elephant, leopard. Leopard. Grey, brown, grey, brown, grey. Excellent. Oh, it's going to be and magnificent. The, look, and it's the same here with the elephant. Uh, sorry, the elephant. <laughs> the <laughs> this giraffe. is what we call an elephant. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. I can't wait to see the other tablecloth that you got on the table. Yes. Shall we have a peek? No, I think we have to delay. Hey, horrid me, and I'm cross, and I'm going somewhere else. We can look at it if you want. Just let's not put it fully on. All right, just have a peek. Okay, just to see the colours in the room. That's a compromise situation, and that's what couples do. Oh, is it? What I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> it's the colour I'm so excited to see in here. It goes very well with the, the wallpaper as well. <laughs> I know. And the, and the wallpaper. Paper. Yeah. Do I think it's even better than this one? I think this might be my new favourite one. I think this will look stunning with... Okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay, keep it there. I think one of the great pleasures of coming home from a holiday is seeing the things that you got on that holiday for your home and we're imagining where they could go and how they could work and how they could coordinate with things at home and then actually trying it all out. The oh, ones. yes. I mean, definitely. And then... So it's really weird, isn't it? Mixing like Louis the Fifteenth with African yeah. chic. I think I mean, it works. Yes. Versailles, quite literally. Yeah. This was made for <laughs> Louis the Fifteenth, wasn't uh, it? Fontainebleau. Fontainebleau. Okay, so Fontainebleau yes. meets Africa. Definitely, I think the charger plate is is a triumph, and I've got the same thing with these. I think this one goes beautifully on here, mm. and it's funny because this is the pattern that Marie Antoinette personally chose for her own little retreat, the Petit Trianon at Versailles. And it's her favorite flower, the corn flower. And it's got these lovely pearls going all the way around the edge too, on the color that they referred to as goose poo at Sèvres. Quite right. So there you have the poo background, the pearls and the corn flowers. They're and beautiful. I've got an entire service of that. So maybe we can start using that this- uh, This season. This season. Oh, that'd be fabulous. I'm filming just the end of the table that's got the new tablecloth so that everybody can see it with the chairs and the wallpaper, and the, the Ardmore vase in the background. And I can't wait for us to actually try it over the whole table. But I think you're right. Let's delay gratification. Exactly.
Ah, oh, today's harvest has arrived. Yeah, sorry. No, it's I didn't not get that. a basket, so. Oh, you've got some of our new red Brussels sprouts. Yeah, I haven't tried them yet. Yeah, I love them. How cute! Yeah, aren't they? We have to eat them. So. And all of this. Yeah, just a bit of lettuce, parsley, mm, thyme. herbs. Yeah. <gasps> parsley I'm most excited about. Marie's asked me to try her macaron but she's only made the shell not the filling and I don't feel that I can truly taste them properly without a bit of filling so I've got the Nutella because she said just imagine them with a chocolate ganache. She's like no need to imagine. Why would I imagine? I just have a little bit of Nutella in there. Oh, they're wonderful and I thought it was really hard to make macaron. These are delicious. It might still be hard, but Marie managed yeah, to do it. She's done it really well. Look how beautiful with the pale green. La Land Life has leveled up once <laughs> again. No, that's very, very nice. Thank you. I'm working on the oven settings, but I will have them perfect at some point. <laughs> we'll keep trying. And yes. that, that's going to be fine. <laughs> sure. <laughs> if you insist. <laughs> we're going to pop out to the chapel now because so much has been happening whilst we were away. The paint restorers have started, but they haven't started any actual restoration of the paintwork. They've just started the cleaning process. So. We'll see if we can spot any of that, but I think it's been a very, very light clean so far. It's a lovely day for going out to the chapel. Grey, murky, cold, windy. Really quite a change from sunny South Africa. There we go. So let's get the light on in here. There's, you know, there's even more way. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, so there are, how do I turn the light on? We don't turn the light on, no. is that? Okie dokie, because yes. look how beautiful the wall looks. Sorry, I got distracted by the lack of a light. There's no light. Because there's a beautiful, smooth wall. This is... Wow. What a change! And here you can see that the areas that were remaining, they've managed to keep, and they've just plastered around in the areas that were missing. And it goes all the way up to the top now. Just try and show you. Oh my goodness, the change. That's I amazing. Know. The other side is white. Right. See this? They've done a beautiful job. And around the window there... And all the bits there that were missing around that one? And around the death of St. Joseph as well. So, question for all of you. What are these things called in English? So, they're called Verwaterbakis in Dutch. And they're called Binitje in French. It's a holy water font. Is it... I think if you just say font, yeah? you kind of mean the baptismal font. That's what I thought. But yeah. this is, I think, a holy, holy water, water font, font. But hopefully people will correct me if, um, if I'm wrong with that. is holy water and mm. Bucky is just a container, Okay. But... Right, so I will explain a bit what's been going on. Maybe we can go up the ladder and see more from the top. Oh my goodness, have you seen this? Look what? <gasps> oh, that's terrifying. Oh, I'm glad my mother's not here. I think she'd find this very upsetting. It's about look away. They've even taken the doors of the sacristy yeah. off. So almost all of the paintwork in the sacristy had to be sacrificed. It just couldn't be kept. Do you know what's happening with those what look like missing bricks? Oh, they've got some new ones there already cut. Oh, so they're going to be replacing that? Presumably they were loose or something? Oh, gosh, yes. So they found that back wall in a very bad state of damp. And behind the piece of furniture that had been here, we discovered that it was in a really bad state. The wood, in fact, of the piece of furniture here had been completely rotting. I think you can... Oh, no, these are old, old bricks you can see. Amory swept out most of the wood. It had completely rotted away underneath it. Have you seen, by the way, that on those two stones underneath the round window, so I think it says A, A and D. D. It must be the date, mustn't it? Yeah. I wonder what was there. Luckily, the sacristy was all the same repeat pattern mm. and rather a simple one. Except so, for the little dado here. Yes, there was nothing below the dado. It was very simple below the dado, luckily. And this one is going to be not too, too difficult to reproduce. Still, it's healthy, isn't it? Mm. To see it like this and know that it can breathe before they replaster it. Yeah. And we're removing the damp from the outside, so that's healthy. There are still some areas to plaster over there. And here you get a very, very good visual idea of the project of the chapel, which is a mixture of restoration and recreation. Over here, every area where you see the paintwork is still in place, that is going to be restored. And every area where there is just plain plaster work, that will be recreated to match. So that we can end up with a chapel that looked exactly as it was intended to look and 160 years ago. Also renovation with all the electrics. Yes, absolutely. Putting in things that we didn't have before. 
the electrics in the chapel, new lighting. It's wonderful. Right, I'm going to go up. I, I'm going to see if you can see any of the cleaning. I don't think it's going to be possible just yet, but let's go and have a look just in case. We're on the first level now. We're going up to the top level, but just whilst we're here, I just wanted to share. This is the exact spot where Philip proposed to me. It was right here next to the statue that we now think is the Curie d'Ars. And you were looking out of the window. It was the other way around, exactly. You were looking out of the window to check that no one was coming in uh, because Sebastian had just gone around the corner and then he got on bended knee here. So this is my favourite spot in the chapel now. <laughs> just in front of the secretary. Yes, yeah, sort of up at the level of the statues, floating in midair. I'm going to carry on, go up now. You can see where they have cleaned. The yes. ceiling looks completely different in patches. It looks incredibly clean. Especially the red. Do you see where it goes? Oh my goodness. No, it's extraordinary the difference. And this is how they've been doing it. They have been using sheets in a solution because they've discovered that the red, the green, the black, and the blue paint used in the chapel. And if you look around, that's it. That's pretty much all the. I thought that was going to be purple as well, but, but on the walls, exactly. Uh, but... There's a little bit of purple here and there. It's almost all the paint in the entire chapel. They discovered that they are very fragile colours and they can't rub them in any way. And so it's a compressed method of cleaning. And I wasn't expecting to see such a huge difference in areas of the ceiling where they've started the cleaning. It's absolutely beautiful. I will just show you areas that haven't been cleaned because, you know, it's hard to tell when you're just looking at one patch. Here is an uncleaned patch of ceiling. Big difference. And here is a clean patch of ceiling. Yes, and you can see it. Big, big difference. Absolutely huge. My goodness. Oh, can you imagine when it's all done? I am imagining it. But I am thinking, you know, looking at it like this, you've got so many lovely windows here. I think we should actually just put this floor in permanently. Yeah, a little mezzanine. Lo lovely sitting room. Oh, <laughs> bed here underneath the, the rosary window. Can you imagine? Look at this view. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I know you can totally see why people restore chapels to live in them, which Philip and I could never do. No, no, I was joking. Catholic. And I'm not, I'm not religious, I've mentioned this before, but my grandmother is always whispering in my ear, there is absolutely no way that I could ever turn this into anything other than the chapel that it is. But I think for a lot of places, it's actually very good that people are finding new uses for it. But otherwise they just fall into- This chapel is still consecrated. Mm. And we're doing this to, to put it back exactly, exactly as it was. As a chapel. As though you're walking back into it in 1860 or... It's exactly what I want. I think because of my father, I also feel a responsibility, not just to my grandmother, who was extremely religious. She taught catechism. I had to go to church every Sunday with her. I went to Lourdes for my first communion. So these were big events in my life with my grandmother. Um, but because of my father, I think of the artists who painted this mm. chapel. And I think how important it is for them to keep their work, to preserve it for the future, their vision, and not just the architect who, who designed it, but everyone who painted even one star on this ceiling. Their workmanship is exquisite, and that has to be kept for mm. their sake, as well as for our sake and for the sake of future generations. Have you seen that bucket, by the way? I love that bucket. Look at Oh no, these are some that's stylish. quality paint or right. as if that's the bucket they're using. And when we left, the scaffolding wasn't coming all the way up to here. No. So now we can finally walk up to the stained glass windows over here and look at all of these vaults that you have adopted stars in. It's absolutely wonderful. You can see the hole where the chandelier was coming down and there's still a pulley system in the attic above to move it up and down to put the actual candles in but obviously we'll electrify it now. But imagine all of this when it's cleaned and restored. Got the sacred heart of Jesus here. Do you suppose it would still be useful to keep the pulley system just to like change bulbs and such? Or do you think we'd just grab a ladder and change bulbs? It's actually quite a good idea. We should speak to the architect yeah. about it. But this is very uplifting. And look at that new vault, the perfection of the new vault that they did. And let's brave the cold. Are we moting the chapel? Wow, you can see why we need a French drain put in, can't you? There's an absolute visual of what's been going on under the surface all this time. Don't even think about it. We're getting that water away from its foundations. 
Philip is setting up in the music room because we're about to film an interview with Philip for the patrons of the Chateau Diaries. I've interviewed everyone in the Chateau, but not Philip. Strangely, he's like the last to be interviewed. So that's the big interview that we're filming this afternoon for tonight's patron video. So if you're one of our patrons, you can look out for that video tonight. So you're going to set up the tripod just here. Either on the table or on the floor, depending on... Okay, and then we'll do it there. All right. So bye-bye for now. See you on the other side of the interview. That was fun. Did you learn anything about me? I did, actually. Good. Yeah. I've heard a rumour that Marie and Philip have teamed up. <laughs> they have. Hello. One person creating a wonderful dinner, one person doing a glorious table. The green team. Oh, are these the silver-plated asparagus it clamps? Is. I mean, yeah, I'd call them is. servers, but if you want to call them clamps, let's go for it. I think it's in French. So you put the asparagus on there and then... Asparagus oh. tweezers, so tongs. What do you think? Tongs, maybe. Very nice. The look, they've is, actually I, got asparagus on them. Yes, the only thing is I didn't um, polish it. I like this country chic. Thank with, you. of course, I mean, everyone's favourite artichoke jug. Absolutely. And then there's the candlesticks, which are tulips. Um, but don't want to mention that they look like... I remember you getting those. They look a bit, um, phallic, apparently. So... Tulips it is. We're sticking with tulips. tulips. So I wish everyone could not only see this, but smell I everything know. that's going on. Because it smells so good. <laughs> and this is the sauce that's going in the artichoke yes. thingy. Yeah. It's just, uh... Hollandaise, I would say. Yeah. I mentioned I love living with you. I love living with you. <laughs> That's the radish from the market and the Brussels sprouts from the garden. Yes. Well, what is this? It's rusted. Oh, heaven. With a new tin side you got. Really? Yeah. Didn't I do well? <laughs> So <laughs> the guests did us, I'll cut them in a, in a round shape and plate them. Oh, yeah, I love this. So is this to like pile things onto? Yeah. There you go, Kim. Thank you. Oh. Pièce de résistance. The asparagus. Look how perfectly those tongs pick up the asparagus. Oh, look at that. I mean, I know there's chicken too, but frankly, it looks so good. You don't really need any meat added to it. Maybe I spoke too soon. <laughs> Do you know what, Philip? Tell me. It's good to be home. <laughs>